Hi, this is Fran with Stampendous. This is our watercolor class 106. And we've got the same wonderful um, watercolor uh, products to work with, the favorite brush. We've talked about the color wheel and our diagram to work with this wonderful palette. And we are now on the March uh, released um, clear stamp sets that include our wonderful little sketchy birds, our moonlit wings, and our, our let me see, here we go, sunrise, sunset. So we'll work with a little bit of each of these in this class, and we're ready to start. With my palette, I've got all of my wonderful Daniel Smith paints. These six colors are in their place in the palette. And it is dry, so I'll start by spritzing uh, with my little spray bottle here just to revive all the colors. And the colors are so bright and beautiful. And we'll be working with some of the grays up here in this area. And just as a quick reminder, as you saw on our color wheel, with only these uh, six primary colors, we have a split between the warm colors and the cool colors. And the cool colors will be what I use to get my cool grays and blacks. And we'll be doing some of that up here in this area of the palette. I've cut my Canson watercolor paper to a three and a quarter by three and a half. I've used just plain old masking tape, and by uh, reducing some of the tack on my work table, <laughs> I've secured this uh, panel to a little clipboard so that I can keep it right in view. And in this case, I kept only uh, like an eighth of an inch little edge all the way around and press it down. Now I'm ready to stamp. So using my um, clear stamps and my VersaFine ink, this black ink pad is the ideal one to stamp and then to be able to watercolor from it. So we'll stamp our little bird down here toward the bottom edge. And then the little message, your tweet, I've put it on a small block and I've squared it off to the top of the block so that I know if I needed to do it straight. And if you're not that familiar a stamper or you're just speeding along like me, I will highly recommend that with a new stamp you get the feel of it on the block and do it on some scrap paper. Sometimes you're going to tip it one way or another, or press harder on one edge than another, and you need to have the feel of a nice even impression before you go to this whole panel now that it's all ready, right? You want to get a nice impression each time. So now that I've tested it, clean my block if I had a whole bunch of excess ink, and now I'm going to stamp it at a couple of angles here. Um, Actually, if I hold it this way, I get a more even. Okay. So if you're going to stamp messages into your um, painting, I strongly recommend that you do the stamping first. And because it'll be hard later to go back and stamp after you've painted, you'll think, oh, I might not get it quite right. If you had stamped and made a mess of it, at least if you did that first, I would just remove the whole thing, flip it over, and tape it down and do uh, work on the other side. Okay, I wanted to keep everything in view, and I'm going to create puddles of all of my basic colors here. Okay, in this case, the placement of my little messages is what gave me um, the idea for how I'm going to place these colors. So let's test and see that we've got a good, pretty, and a clean yellow. 
And on a nice clean brush, we're just going to make sort of an ovaly blurb of color there. And then since these two are close together, I'm going to move next over to my scarlet. If that looks a little bit washed out or a little bit, I don't want it so intense that I can't read my message. Okay, that looks about right. And it'll dry a little bit lighter. So I'm just making some fun little kind of ovaly shapes here. I'm going to let those dry just a little bit and move down here to our little robin red breast here. Okay, so I've got a nice rose on my brush now. I think I'm going to blot my brush just a little bit and spread some of this color in a lighter touch around the side. And it's best to let this all be wet on wet. Okay, that looks kind of fun. Okay, and now it looks like the yellow is probably dry enough. And I'm going to add this, the gamboge color, and since it's similar enough, if they run together, that's okay. So it's kind of like three little blurbs here of tweets from our little birdie. Kind of move the color away from the words a little bit, if you like. Let it puddle around the edges. Okay, that looks fun. Okay. Next I'm going to do this background color and I'll show you, let's see, on our little robin, working on this clipboard allows me to lift it and kind of turn it. I can see I'm getting some little watermarks. Check that my brush is clean. I might just join that up a little bit and hold it at an angle so that the color stays more intense right there under his little chin. <laughs> okay, so now I've got my cool blue, cool red, and cool yellow up here in the top part of my palette. And if I swirl a wet brush around between all three points of color there, I should be able to get cool grays and blacks. I quite liked the interesting color that this was. And it's actually uh, a little bit more on the blue side. So I'm going to dip into more of the blue. And it kind of just becomes a, a skill to be able to see a color and try to match it. Since this is not looking like where I'm going, I'm going to dip over here into this other blue, which is... Okay, so that's looking kind of interesting and closer to the blue that I had. And yours is going to be different each time. But now I have kind of an interesting soft muted color, so I'm going to go with that. And I want to be able to come up to the edges here. So now that's kind of dry, I'm going to dip in, get a little bit more water on my brush. And I kind of just made some random little brush strokes here coming in underneath and then I just kind of pulled it all the way across and I think I wanted a little bit darker in this corner so I'm picking up a little bit more and as long as this area is still wet I should be able to 
flood a bit more of this color in here. And again, you'll probably be happiest with what you can do in one pass knowing that the second time I come in, the shape will probably show differently. So maybe I'll come back over the same area and get it wet and go darker. But over here, it's kind of fun if it goes to two shades of color there. And again, okay, now that the rest of this is dry, I'm going to come back and uh, finish my bluebird. You might use either one of these blues. This is the marine, the French ultramarine blue in the outside pocket and the thalo blue in the inside pocket. And because they're next to each other here, perhaps it's a good time to just talk about, you might want to blend some of each one together for our little robin here. And the key is that whatever you're doing, you've got some little scrap paper here to test your colors. And you can see how wet, that's kind of a little bit too wet. It's going to puddle quite a bit. So, and then I've got my blotter. And if my uh, blotter is white, then I can see a little bit more what's happening. So, okay, that's looking a little bit easier to control. Maybe I'll get a little bit more of the blue. Again, if I can do one pass, that's the easier way to go. This is looking a little bit dark. I'm going to blot some of that off and go back to my phthalo blue. Come in from the other direction here. And again, it's going to dry a little bit lighter. And you want it, you don't want it perfectly even all the way around. You might have a little bit darker down in here behind the wing. Maybe a little bit darker here behind the wing on that side. And some of those things just give it some interest rather than just being all flat color. And since I didn't paint the beak, I'll come back in, check that my brush is clean, and do some yellow on the beak. But here you can see how nicely it sets off against yellow with the blue to frame it. And I prepared this ahead in the same way. The size of this panel is now 3 by 4 and I did the same technique of just the real narrow edge of tape. And again, you can see here, uh, be patient practice and stamp the message very carefully and if you do that first and you're not happy with it then you just turn the paper over and start again and in this one this was the first one I did and so now I've moved my message further down into the corner so that it won't be right in the middle of the rainbow that we'll paint and to show you a tip with that I took a bit of scrap chipboard and I just penciled a curve. And if you need some help with this, this would be like as big as a circle of a dinner plate or something. So find something big if you want to trace a curve, because I didn't want it to be as tight a curve as, say, the masking tape, which would be harder to work with. So let's, I did a nice curve and I penciled it. And now with a large pair of scissors, you don't want a whole bunch of little tiny jagged cuts, but if you can try to get a continuous or mostly continuous cut here, this would give me a line now that I can work with. So since these were stamped and they've had a chance to dry, I'm going to start, it's kind of hard to see my angle here. I'm going to take a pencil and just do a really light line Remembering that once I paint over pencil lines, chances are it's not going to be able to be erased later. Okay, now you could make this rainbow go from narrow to wide, 
or be almost the same width coming across using the same template. And I'm going to keep it like this because it's easier to paint than a more curvy line. And so that gives me the outside edges of my rainbow. And since those are going to be the darker colors, I'm okay with that. So if your pencil lines are light, and we've determined that um, we'll have the darker colors, um, that's looking pretty good. Hopefully you can see that the lines are there. If it's real dark, um, take a, a clean or a, a kneaded eraser like this um, that would allow you to lighten the lines just enough to where you can see where they are to uh, begin painting. I'm going to start again with my Hansa Yellow Light, and we're going to paint this through the middle section, because in this case now we're going to let the colors blend together. I need some more water. And I'm putting the yellow down all the way through this middle area because we're going to overlap some of the colors. Okay, and while that's drying, let's do a bit of our blue sky. And like we talked about before, your puffy clouds are going to be your negative space, your white area. And we're going to um, be painting the area that is darker here in my little diagram. And it's nice, I think, when you've taped the edges to get some color touching most of the sides just to define the space. Since the clouds in this one are not at all the focal point, I'm going to stick to my uh, light phthalo blue, and that actually looks just about right. And I'm going to think puffy clouds and kind of just come in around the lettering. I want the message to be easy to read. Just want some soft little bit of color to define the edges here. And then with a drier damp brush, I want to soften that line. That looks kind of awkward. I'm going to soften it again. I'm almost like lifting color away. So that's where you don't want to start too dark and give yourself a workout. But we just want soft little bit of color here. Okay, and that one looks interesting enough up there. Okay. So now our yellow has had time to dry. We're going to come back in and do some more of the gamboge color next. And we're going to move our lighter colors in the direction going to this side. So now I'm overlapping the yellow. And actually that's going to do it. So the colors are in order in the palette the way we want to move for our rainbow. You can have fun looking at artwork of rainbows and see how many times an artist actually gets it wrong. <laughs> it's kind of funny. So, but this is the way the colors are uh, next door neighbor or analogous colors because of the way they blend the most readily. So now we want to do a stroke here that's kind of wet and that'll let those two colors kind of mix together. Okay, it's nice if you can get one big stroke that way. And next I'm going to move over to the rose. And now because we're going to let these colors blend a little bit, 
I can proceed while that color is wet to add the next one. And so now I'm coming up to my pencil line. Okay, so this is a fun one to let the colors uh, blend a little bit. Okay, now I'll go to my greens and blues on the other end of the spectrum. And for this, I'm using the pocket that has yellow with the phthalo blue. And I want mostly yellow to get a nice lime green. I think I'll, that looks pretty good. So I'm coming inside the yellow and doing a stroke of that. And since I've got irregular emerging of color on this side, I'm going to wet the edge of this and let it kind of just mix a little bit more with the yellow, over the yellow. And then I'm going to go ahead with my phthalo blue. A little bit of both blues is okay. And now let's see if I can follow my pencil line with a nice big stroke all the way up. Probably don't want any white in between. I might want something just a little bit darker on this edge. So I've added some paint. Now I'm trying to follow that pencil line. Okay. With the rainbow, this blue would next mix into the purples. It's though the lineup that's here would loop around and the blues would mix into the purples. So in the rainbow, if you can see the full range, you would see some violet on the edge of the blue or possibly on the edge of the red. So let's, while this is still damp, just add a little bit. It's quite nice. I like the nice clean edge I had on the red, so I don't think I'm going to add anything over there. But you could possibly do a little bit of a magenta color on that side. might be nice. Okay. So you could almost leave the butterfly open just like this. He looks very translucent flying across this rainbow. But let's add just a little bit of color so it doesn't look like we just forgot. And I'll come over here with a little bit of red and we'll just do a little bit of color on the wing on that side. And we'll do a little bit of the blue on this side. Maybe even a little bit of this darker blue. And I'm almost just doing dots. I'm not trying to fill it in entirely. Okay. Okay, so on this one, I think it's quite fun that we've got some interesting watermarks in our rainbow. And each one will come out a little bit different. And I think that is a fun way to go. And as you can see here to finish off the card, it was very dramatic again with the yellow and the frame of blue. And in this one, I've already, I have the tape so close to the edge, I don't need to do any more trimming. And I can stamp the other little butterfly for a background if you like. I'm not going to take the time to paint these, but having seen what we did on the other projects, these are some other variations of the butterflies that you might like to try. And if you can see it in the background, I just kept stamping the butterflies in a real uh, light orange color so that it's really just kind of tone on tone. You can uh, just see a little bit of interest of the pattern and that set off nicely to my painted panel. Over here, I did some washes kind of like we did last week. But in this case, I added the butterflies and the little uh, moon with the dragonflies. 
and you can see a couple of different variations. You can just do washes of yellow in this whole area and then work into some greens and blues and you like the more muted colors or contrast the muted colors here with the bright colors there. Um, you can have some fun and there's two lovely um, sprigs um, in the set. So you have one that kind of bends left and the other right and when you put them together you get a beautiful pattern as well. Next we're going to do some very subdued colors where we're using the blue-gray for the skies and in each of these you can see they're different and they have very subdued bit of color and we're going to stamp whatever silhouetted images you might want at the end. So I wanted to show you these have very simple color and then these other ones are playing off of using the same blue-gray uh, colors for the sky and then adding just little bits of other color along the horizon. This one is the brightest but then um, stepping it back um, and keeping it very minimal actually is quite effective and so let's play around with a little bit of this. Okay, I've taped two panels uh, with just a little bit more of an edge and I'm going to use um, the thalo blue and then uh, mostly grays. So I'm going to get some puddles ready ahead. And it is important to pre-mix enough of a puddle to get you through the painting size. And otherwise, when you go back and do a wash of a second slightly different mix, they may look blended when it's wet and then they may dry and you might see more of the variation of color to it. So better to start with a good puddle here. Okay, and to get this soft look of color, I actually need quite a lot of water. So on this side, I'm going to wet most of the panel to start with and we'll compare how that works to the other one in a more dry approach. Okay, so I'm going to start with some blue and that's looking a little bit thin. And again, I'm letting the water do a lot of the work here and I'm dipping into this lovely gray which I should have tested there. And I want it pretty dark to look like the rain is coming here with all this water. I'm leaving some white intentionally and we're just going to let that move around a little bit more on its own. Okay. On this side, I'm not going to pre-wet it. Make sure I've got a good puddle going here. I'm just barely keeping this in view, I know. Okay, so now I'm going straight to paper with my wet, wet brush. I'm thinking sort of puffy cloud kind of directions to my paint and I'm not liking those hard edges so with a wet brush I'm just flooding some more water I'm going to add just a little bit of blue and bring it up here into my grays. I went sort of short on puddles there. And again, if you're getting watermarks, flood it with some more water while you have the chance. And then I'm intentionally fading out down here in this area 
And as you may have guessed, we're going to let this dry before we come back in with some of this other color. And again, that's only safe to do if you've got lots of water there for it to have room to move around a little bit. You could keep it very pastel, and it still often is just quite interesting just to have the soft color, but having a little bit more contrast to it can be nice. These three pretty much had very muted color. And then these, I added more color on the horizon after the grayer parts of it had a chance to dry. Some of it was still wet on wet a little bit, but at least having the gray and adding the yellow is going to be much easier to work with than if you get too much blue and then your yellow gives you a greenish color in the sky. So now these have dried enough that I'm going to add some subtle bits of color along the horizon. I'm going to get this entire area wet. I'm going to come in with some soft yellow. Add a little bit up into here just to let it all sort of work together. Maybe just a little this bit of, I added yellow and then gamboge and uh, just a little bit of the scarlet. And sometimes that minimal color is all you need. And if your yellow up here is creating watermarks or you don't like how it's drying, do your mop-up technique and lift it away. And actually that's leaving just the subtlest bit of warm color to the sky. Be sure and do your stamping before you remove the tape. Be careful when you're stamping up to this edge that you don't stamp into this area by mistake. If you have an area that didn't completely fill in with the black, take your fine tip marker and fill it in before you take the tape off. On this one, I taped a wide enough area that I can do my torn edge. If I hold it close and pull away a narrow strip all the way around.
If you have trouble with a taped edge like I did just on this one side, I'm, uh, I'll show you an easy way to just trim some of this away. And I wasn't too happy with either outside edge, so um, with the new uh, Fisker cutters, there's a wire that shows me exactly where my cut line is, and that makes it very easy to trim on all sides. And if there's a part of the sky you just really don't like, you can do the same and make a smaller little painting. As many of you have requested, the different templates that I've been showing in the watercolor series are now available as downloads on the Stampendous website. So I hope you've had fun with the projects we did in Class 106, and be sure and subscribe with your YouTube account so that you can uh, follow along and get a heads up for each Friday's next watercolor fabulous fun with Fran video.